G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the lowest battle rating plane in the tech trees. That is, in the main tech trees, no premiums counted to have air-to-air -air missiles. This plane is a little bit, I would say, controversial. However, it does come with a couple of very, very big caveats. This is the F9F-8 Panther. Well, Cougar, because they gave it a slightly new designation, and my god, isn't this thing an interesting plane to fly? It has strange performance. It's not a plane that you can just sort of go around and do whatever the hell you want. You have to be very slow and very steady. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a couple of situations that you just cannot do anything about. And for me, the F9F Cougar is one of those planes that I actually quite enjoy. Simply because it just makes you use your noggin a little bit. And it makes you think about the situations you're about to get into. Now, speaking of about to get into, I'm about to get into a little bit of a tangent here. And I'd just like to talk about a video that I've uploaded. And you won't find it on this channel. You'll find it on a channel called Spitflyer Shorts. That is my second channel. I intend to upload like little stuff there, maybe uh, one minute videos, maybe some occasional memes, uh, big stuff like uh, proper content like this or tutorials or perhaps War Thunder but I'm dead inside, maybe I can make another one of them. I have got footage, I just need to get off my ass and make that. Uh, maybe I could get that here on the main channel. Uh, but small stuff, montages, they'll all go on the smaller channel. And of course, if you guys like the Tiki Talkies, the, the, the TikTok, if you're a zoomer like that, or a degenerate, whichever way you look at it, uh, I do also upload these videos on TikTok too. So go and have a look. They'll be in the description below, or I'll find a link tree or something like that to post. Anyway, fast forwarding to some action, because this plane requires a fair bit of side climbing. It's one of those planes that actually requires a little bit of pre uh, sort of preparation, if you will. You need to get some altitude, you can't afford to early engage, otherwise you're going to be swamped. Uh, and in this case here, I'm up against a lot of G91s, and the G91 is one of the planes that the F9F actually excels against, provided that you're not on the tail end of the whole time, as in, as long as you're not getting those AIM-9s shoved up your ass, you can shove AIM-9Bs up their ass instead. So, we are looking here at this German G91, and because he's firing missiles, he's definitely a premium. Uh, this was this footage was taken somewhat after the November sales, so there are plenty of newbies running around here in G91s. Uh, first missile doesn't really make it because it's only an AIM-9B, but I'm going to continue forward. I'm going to keep that uh, speed. I'm going to keep that momentum going. I'm not going to waste any energy. I'm going to go for that G91 R3. R3 doesn't cut it, so the R4 will have to do. He's pretty slow, so I'm going to go for a little bit of uh, a spray. But as soon as I finish with that, I'm going to go put it back into the vertical. You can see there are three G91s behind me, and I, whilst I am going to get missiled here, well, they're going to send one my way. I will have plenty of speed and plenty of energy to deal with those missiles. And even though he's closing the distance, I'm actually gaining a lot of separation away from the other three, which is the important part. And on top of that, my teammates are closing in quite quickly to help. You can see there is an AIM-9B heading straight for this G91. He doesn't see it, and I get the, uh, the, the friendly assist, and the other one goes down. So this is an absolute win. I, I do see this as an absolute win. And we are moving on to W number two coming up against these two G91s. So now that we've separated ourselves, we have the opportunity to turn back and get some speed, get some energy, and hopefully make a nice few kills. Closing in that distance, uh, 2.9 is probably the limit of where I would fire an AIM-9B, but because this G91 here is so slow, I can pretty much do whatever the hell I want, and it's almost guaranteed to land. Uh, I just fire another one for good measure, and it looks like the second one isn't even going to hit. No, it is going to hit, and that is the magic of a slow plane versus an AIM-9. Now, the G91R3 and the G91R4 are both highly highly capable planes, uh, especially the R4, but when the R4 is weighed down by missiles, you tend to find that they are much easier targets for missiles themselves. And so what you do is you just sort of make yourself available in the missile department. You look for G91 R4s that are slow and you just pick them off like it's nothing. Uh, and speaking of picking them off, I get to pick this guy off provided that my aim works. And of course it does because my aim is always perfect, right? Right. The G91 R4s are going to be your best food here. Seriously, these things 
can uh, lose a lot of speed. And whilst you don't have amazing energy retention, in fact, this plane seems to dump speed quite heavily. And at the higher speeds where you might otherwise want to be because you know you want to conserve that energy, you end up getting uh, compression. And so you just can't turn. Your best dogfighting speeds are like 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers per hour, maybe 500 at the top. Uh, and of course, you only have landing flaps, so you have to be careful with how you use those. I tend to go for the extreme lows. If I can single out a single enemy and maybe string them out like I did earlier, then I can force them into a one versus one, force them to go low speed. And of course, if they're carrying four AIM-9Bs, then they're not going to be uh, particularly strong after that fact. They're going to have a lot more weight on them. They're going to have a lot more drag. And so they are going to be much easier targets to pick. Now, speaking of easier targets to pick, we have here a G91, a German one, and we have an IL-28. Now, the IL-28 is easily the easier target, but I'm going to go for the one in the back. No, I'm not. I'm going to go for the one that is highest up because have a look at the IL-28. He's in a very precarious position and the G91 looks like it's not going to go for uh, me. So I'm going to pick off the IL-28 while I can and the G91 is going to be quite rapidly finished off by my uh, teammates there. So that's pretty much GG. Moving on to the absolute banger of a match. This, I was very proud of this match because I took my time and slow and steady absolutely won the race here. It is just the meta with this plane. And here we have a couple of the Israeli A4s. We have G91s. We have premiums everywhere, but we also have AIM-9s everywhere. So even at these high altitudes, you have to be extremely careful. Not only can the G91s and the A4s climb up to your altitude and be at your altitude and be faster, but you've also got to make sure that you don't lose too much speed. Otherwise, the missiles are going to become more effective against you. Not to mention that they are already highly effective at those higher altitudes because there is less air resistance. They travel faster. And of course, they can. Uh, I believe they can actually turn better at these altitudes too. So you have to be super, super careful. Now, being super careful also means keeping your head on a swivel. And uh, keeping my head on a swivel means this MiG-17 is going to get an AIM-9B. And that is going to be hopefully the end of it for him. But the MiG-17 gets a little bit distracted by my teammate. And uh, instead of focusing on staying nice and straight and level for me, he uh, turns and makes me very, very upset in uh, inside. It hurts my feelings. So that's not very good. But we're off to a pretty bad start. Not really. But, um, you know, he crashes anyway. So nothing of value was lost. Now, I'm scanning around the battlefield. I'm pretty damn sure that that is not the enemy that, uh, well, not the enemy in its entirety. So there's got to be someone else lurking out there somewhere. And so I have to keep my head on a swivel. You can see the enemies there with zero points. They're the enemies that haven't even showed up on the battlefield. And they're the people that you're going to have to watch out for. So I guess as soon as you see most of those people, then you're pretty much in the clear to engage whatever the hell you want. But in the meantime, keep an eye out for the zero pointers because those guys are going to be the ones that spook you. They're going to be the ones that surprise you. And of course, you're the one who's going to be uh, suffering because of it. Now, the uh, Meteor is pretty much toast and the Seahawk is about to be toast here because he's gone up into a vertical. And this is where the uh, Cougar sort of excels. It's one of those real support planes. The uh, Seahawk goes up into a vertical and uh, pretty much kills himself like that. So you're going to be zooming around where you can and uh, getting missile kills. But when you can't do that, you're going to be singling out one-on-ones. You're going to be looking for opponents that are very distracted, or you're going to be looking for opponents that are separated from the herd, and then you're going to pounce on those ones because they're going to be your easier targets. They're also going to be the targets that you can rapidly deal with, and uh, the only real target that you're absolutely going to struggle with on almost all cases is going to be, uh, well, there's two or three. The Ki-200, the ME-163, and the uh, MiG-15. The MiG-15 can pretty much do everything better than you. So you have missiles. And what you have to do with the MiG-15s is you have to get them to just go into a vertical and just chuck a PLAAF versus Taiwan Air Force. And um, while they're cocky and going away into the vertical, using that vertical energy retention to absolutely dominate you, you fire an AIM-9B at them while they're slow, hit them in the ass, and get that fat kill. So... You have to either work as a team to try and deal with these types of threats, or alternatively, you have to just try your best to uh, not get yourself in a dirty 1v1 that isn't going to result in you shoving an AIM-9B up the enemy's ass. So what you need to do, keep your head on a swivel, 
pick your 1v1s and of course work with your team that's your best advice of course and don't overcommit to head-ons like i almost did there that uh tu14 very very deadly frontal armor uh frontal armament rather it's got some pretty beefy cannons and you don't want to be on the receiving end of that in fact the la15 has the same cannons and i made a video on the la15 which i am quite proud of uh it was actually the la174 but they're functionally the same thing speaking of the same thing uh another bomber uh, Vortu, we're going to be closing the distance in on him, but you've got to notice that airfield, and of course there's a Jutor, which is a bit more spooky, uh, speaking of same thing once again, I'm going to go for a quick little head-on, hopefully not too late, it's looking pretty sketch, but uh, we get that very, very nice head-on kill, and of course the missiles start coming out from the airfield, now... I don't want to be too close to this, and I know, especially at these lower tiers, these missiles are particularly deadly. They have some sort of crazy-ass potency because they are just so damn advanced. Of course, I think these are modern missile systems that are firing these. Like, I would I would say the Roland is, is pretty much modern. Um, let me know in the comments when it was actually introduced, and let me know if it's still in service, because I'm sure it is somewhere. Uh, either way, it is very, very deadly for a 1940s uh, nine, or 1950s jet. Uh, this is just no match. So I'm not even going to bullshit around and I'm just going to stay as far away as I can, maybe hover around, get some distance, and of course, keep my eye on the airfield looking for people to uh, potentially engage. This plane is really good for those hit and run tactics, but it's also really good for those tactics where you don't have a lot of enemies around you. Like I've said, you pick your 1v1s, and in that case, I managed to pick a 1v1 that was actually pretty damn nice. So while we're sort of fart assing around here, uh, I, I'm basically just watching the enemy to see if we can get some uh, easy kills as they come off the runway, or alternatively, I'm trying to see if they decide to all go in one bunch, or maybe spot something for my team, or just do something to hopefully win this match because i'm quite sick of loitering around an airfield waiting for enemies to do something while uh, i'm pretty much just wanking off at 6,000 meters so i decide to do some spotting and i find the g91 i'm going to go in look at my speed and you can see the compression here just because of that compression i really cannot i just i just can't afford to go in a little further i can't commit anymore and that is full elevator that's like absolutely full elevator. I really can't do anything more than that because this plane compresses so damn much. But you know what? That's not a bad thing because that'll increase your energy retention in turns at high speeds. And of course, the A4E is now looking like he might be starting to struggle here because he's heading in a weird direction. I'm, I'm very convinced that this uh, G91 is going to get the upper hand provided that the uh, A4E keeps doing what he's doing. And now he shows his ass to me. So that means it's AIM-9B time. And of course, it uh, doesn't quite land. But that's okay because the G91 is so slow and I have so much energy built up that I'm able to come in and uh, rip that wing off and almost pile myself into that G91 just in time to see the Vultur come out. Let's go for kill number five. He's, uh, he's pretty high up. And I need to get some kills with the guns because I don't have any more missiles. I wasted that last one uh, feeling a little bit of regretty spaghetti there. But you know what? That's okay because I have built up so much energy that the lack of turning in these, uh, in these high speeds has resulted in my plane being able to burst back up to 2,500 meters. And of course, AM3 uh, cannons have such a huge range. Have a look at that. I managed to get a hit at 1.2. The Vortor rolls over and it's 2B, which means that I should have a very easy time killing it with very little resistance. And I saw the wing off at 800 meters. That was probably my favorite kill in a very, very long time. And of course, to top it off here, we have the potential for another kill here with the Jewish, uh, the uh, Israeli rather, A4E. Um, can we catch it? No, actually. I'm pretty damn sure it's faster. And of course, it's got flares. And it's got missiles. It's pretty much got everything you could possibly want. I'm going to put the plane into a dive anyway. See if I can get him. And have a look at that. Even at that uh, full dive, we are struggling to catch him. And we're going to peel off pretty damn soon. There we go. He's just out accelerating us. He's hitting like 1050, something like that. And he's, he's just barreling away from us. So we actually are slower than an A4, than, a, than an 8.7 attacker, which is pretty damn remarkable, uh, even though it is just an attacker. You can see how much performance this thing lacks. It's basically got 
the performance of an 8.0 or a 7.7 with missiles of an 8.7 or 9.0. So you have that sort of middle ground there at 8.3, which I think suits it quite well because it is absolutely inferior to the uh, MiG-15 BIS, and it is, in my opinion, inferior to the A5 F-25 Sabre uh, and the Swift and basically any other 8.7, it is inferior to. Uh, but any 7.7s, it's pretty pretty smooth sailing against them. And as long as you take it slow and steady, this plane, it's great. It's really wonderful. You just pick your 1v1s, you just pick your fights, you use your missiles sparingly, you have fun with the guns, you have plenty of ammunition, and of course, don't go too hard on the flaps, watch your compression, and keep your speed up. Taking that time to side climb helps a lot, and the F9F8 will be a lot of fun for you. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. Of course, check out the Shorts channel or the TikTok or, you know what, I've got a whole bunch of links. Check them out in the description below. You might want to buy the, the decal. Um, maybe that's a great New Year's resolution. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll have some more content coming your way. I've got a few more days off. So until then, take care and I'll catch you next time.